this commemoration of all souls is very unpopular. It's fallen a lot out of, out of custom, out of use. A lot of times, perhaps, because people don't feel like going to Mass two days in a row. And so yesterday, the grand feast of all saints, and then the big uh, of all the souls. Yesterday's feast is glorious, and you deck the church in gold and white. It's a, truly a feast. Today's commemoration is rather dark, as you can see. One thing that, for me, has always been perhaps my favorite uh, liturgies, perhaps the most stark and the one that speaks the most is the funeral liturgy. And it's the one that we actually celebrate today, well, in a certain general sense, that we don't have the dead present in front of us. However, we remember all those before us. A beautiful symbol that used to be done years ago, and unfortunately it's fallen into disuse, we can still use it, but it has fallen into this use, perhaps because now it's considered too traumatic, was to have an empty coffin in the church for this Mass. And so the Mass would be celebrated, the Mass of the Dead for today, for all the souls, but the coffin that was there was empty and was visibly empty. Or they might be, create a sort of deathbed, but it's empty. To remind us, well, we can picture who was there for we all have had friends, relatives, loved ones who occupy that place. But also to remind us that we too will occupy that place one day. In my uh, theology dissertation at the end of, of theological studies, I did a, a correlation between the baptismal liturgy and the funeral liturgy, because believe it or not, they have a lot in common. A lot of the symbols are the same. And so the baptismal liturgy, when one enters the church formally and begins one's life of faith, concludes with the send-off that is the funeral liturgy. And so it's no surprise that you see the same symbols repeated all over again. And so just as in the baptism, we're greeted at the door or in the front of the church before going to the, to the baptismal font, and there's this moment where we talk about the, the name of who one will be given, and there's a, 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 an initial blessing. So on our last liturgy, the last mass that we will attend, we are greeted at the front of the door. One time more time we're called by name in the front of that door. And as we receive that baptismal water, that gave us, we bathe that coffin and the one who enters with the holy water as he enters the church one more time. The name is important. And so just as in baptism, the name of the one to be baptized is repeated and repeated, not just because we want to hear the name of the new child, but to lay claim. And the old baptismal formula say that Christ lays claim to this soul on this day. And so we repeat the name over and over again. So we repeat the name of those who have gone and those who we celebrate the Mass for over and over again in that liturgy to remind us of that claim that God has on that soul. The funeral liturgy is the ultimate send-off. It's the send-off of the one who was presented at baptism in there. I often say that the symbols and that surround both liturgies aren't really for the one receiving it, are not the one for the one the, who benefits from the each rite. Just as perhaps almost all of us, maybe a few, cannot remember our baptism, we don't remember the symbols, we don't remember the words, we don't remember anything from it, well, in a certain way, in our last Mass, we're not going to be quite there. We're going to be somewhere else. And so I say the rites are for the living. The rites are for the adults who go to that baptism. The rites, the funeral rites, are for the benefit of those who are here, perhaps even more. For it reminds us what we believe in. It reminds us what we pray about. 
And so one th symbol that has been kind of lost over time, which I bring out, is the black vestments that would be used before for funeral liturgies and can be used on a day like today of All Souls Day. Black has fallen into disuse. Disuse because they think it's too negative. Black color, what does it symbolize? Darkness, despair, death. Well, we are here to think about death. And so it's not totally inappropriate. But notice how the black itself is not, is not the dominant color. It's broken. It's broken by the silver that you see here. A reminder that the darkness of death, and yes, there is a darkness there, for sometimes we have our fear, and the greatest fear of man is death. What is there? And what is beyond? And that darkness of our thoughts and maybe our despair is not absolute because something pierces through it. The light of Christ. The light of Christ as shown here in the crosses that break this black. And so through that darkness of death with we, which we must all pass through, there is not a light, a light that guides us to Christ. And just as in the baptismal liturgy, right next to the baptismal font, you will find the Paschal candle. On our last Mass, this Paschal candle will be at the head of our coffin. Why? To remind us of that light. The light that guided us through baptism, that called us into life, and the light that guides us to everlasting life in heaven. That is the only light that pierces the darkness of this death. What other light does the world present? What other light can we think of can penetrate the barrier of death? And so that candle makes its way again here tonight, present here. The colors of Advent and Lent are also here as well, that purple. Purple reminding us of the time of preparation. And what is this other than the final preparation? The most that we can prepare our loved one when we send them to the home of the Father. And that purple of penitence, of repentance, and of preparation reminds us those things that we do and how we pray for those who have gone before us. Penance, repentance, reparation, those are the ways we pray for the dead. Like I said, it's something that's lost its meaning perhaps in modern day. And today, I was able to take up a, a custom that I did when I was smaller, but they got lost along the way. But I went to the cemetery to visit the graves of my families who have gone before and went with my mom. And she made a remark in there in the cemetery, because you can see the fresh flowers in a lot of the... Uh, in a lot of the, uh, the, the, the graves today. And she's like, oh, every time you see the fresh, ese tiene que ser la tumba de un católico. Why? Because they brought fresh flowers today, Day of the Dead. But I also said, de un católico muy viejo. Because a lot of our youth, unfortunately, don't even know about that custom. And what I find out, they don't, don't even have funerals anymore. And much less would they visit a grave. And so this commemoration of all the faithful departed, we remember all those before us, those related to us, and those even not related to us. And it ties in with the beautiful offertory prayer of the Mass, and the old offertory prayer that used to be said, that for every Mass, we offer this host, we offer Christ, for all Christians living and dead, for all Christians of all time, past, present, and future. For the Mass is that ultimate connection, that nexus between heaven and earth. For just this half hour, the hour that we give, at that moment, heaven touches earth at that altar. And we present those, all our faithful, all the faithful today, all the faithful of yesterday, and all the faithful of tomorrow, to be present with the Lord who makes himself present with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.